Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Map My India's Q1 FI24 earnings conference call hosted by Anandrati Shares and Stock Brokers. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Shobit Singhal from Anandrati Shares and Stock Brokers. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Carol. Uh, good morning, everyone. On uh, behalf of Anand Rati, uh, we welcome you all to Q1 FI24 conference call of CE Info System or Map My India. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Rakesh Verma, co-founder and chairman of the company. Uh, Mr. Rohan Verma, CEO and executive director of the company. Mr. Anuj Jain, uh, CFO and Mr. Saurav Somani, company secretary and compliance officer of the company. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Rakesh Verma for his opening remarks. Uh, post that, we will open the floor for Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Shobit. And this is Rakesh Verma. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, well, I think I will keep it very short so that uh, more questions and answers can be uh, uh, taken care of by us. Uh, the Q1 quarter has been a very strong performer. Year on year, the revenue growth was broad-based with both A&M up 24% and C&E up 51%. Uh, so if you see, we are delighted that our Q1 F24 reserves were in Mapmandia achieved all-time highs in revenue, EBITDA, and PAC. EBITDA margin was strong for MAP-led business at 54%. When IoT-led business, the EBITDA margin continued to expand quarterly and was at 6.3% as against 4.0% 4, 4 of the last year. This is all because the SaaS income, as we have been talking in the past, has started, taking, uh, has started growing. Q1 uh, fiscal year 24, FAT also reached an all-time high of rupees 32 crores, growing at 32.2% year-on-year. During fiscal year 24, we outlined a five-year vision of a growth, a growth roadmap for the company and are putting in place the requisite foundations that will drive the long-term success of the company. We are also delighted with the surge in interest and usage of our consumer-facing Maples MapMindia app amongst the users, which resulted in Maples app be becoming the top app in the App Store recently. This bodes well for the B2C future of the company. In addition to it supporting our B2B and B2B2C revenues in times to come, where we have been traditionally strong uh, for all these years. With this uh, initial remarks, uh, I'd also like uh, this. Uh, I would also like to add a bit on the map-led and IoT-led business of ours. Uh, if you look at the map-led and IoT-led business of ours, uh, the very quick. Uh, very quick uh, in, uh, uh, statement that I would like to make is the revenue from operations, while the total revenue from operations has been 89.4, the MAP-led has been 66.6, .6, and the IoT-led business has given us 22.8. The EBITDA, while the overall gave us EBITDA margin of 41.9%, uh, the MAP-LED gave, gave us 54.1% and the IoT-LED gave us 6.3% compared to 4.0% in Q4-23. So you, uh, this is pretty much in line with what we have been uh, talking to the investors, how our IoT-LED business will keep gradually growing, not only the revenue side, but also on the margin side. Rohan? 
can you now talk uh, more on this? Great. Thanks a lot, uh, everybody, for joining the call. Uh, as Mr. Verma said, it's been a good quarter. Year-on-year -year revenue growth was broad-based. Uh, a and Automotive and Mobility Tech was up 24%. And uh, CNE, consumer, uh, consumer Tech and Enterprise Digital Transformation, was up uh, uh, 51%. And uh, our DNM revenue, uh, especially automotive OEM volume, just continues to grow faster than the industry's single digit volume growth. So, in that sense, we are happy that we are outpacing that growth of industry volume. And a uh, bunch of uh, you know, wins in DNM across two wheeler EVs. A bunch of key go lives happened, like Hero Motor Car, which is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, two-wheeler company. The new Harley Davidson comes built in with uh, uh, Mathma India, and the flagship Hero Companion app uh, also is coming with us, as well as some uh, new premium ultraviolet uh, uh, EV bikes, uh, uh, you know, went live. And then, of course, our, you know, bunch of fleets, including schools went live with our uh, IoT solutions and even the offline distribution of Apple's gadgets is expanding. And on the consumer tech side, we're quite happy that, you know, a, a lot of consumer facing tech companies, uh, large e-commerce players, D2C brands, food delivery companies, travel commerce sites, uh, they're all starting to use our APIs for improving their delivery address capture for improved efficiency. And this is because our maps are more detailed and accurate. Plus, uh, a lot of the ONDC-enabled apps now are starting to use uh, Mathma India, and that means that we have a play in the increasing o ONDC ecosystem, the open network digital commerce ecosystem, as well as corporates across uh, pop, uh, industry sectors, be it BFSI, energy, consumer durables. Uh, they're all using our digital transformation platform, so workforce management, geospatial analytics, and the government business also continues to grow across maps, IoT, and drones. And specifically on IoT, also video telematics, uh, you know, uh, used by large metal companies or upselling of more use cases with, for example, a large cement company. All this is taking place. And uh, as Mr. Verma said, our, our Maples app, uh, which, uh, which is consumer-facing, I think more and more people are realizing the, the, the benefits of it and the quality of our maps. For example, we give these 3D junction views, which help people figure out whether they have to climb the flyover or, or not, and that saves them 15, 20 minutes time, for example, on a trip, or getting the trip costs, like toll or fuel, which helps them be more cost efficient, or safety alerts, such as current speed limits or speed breakers or sharp curves while they're navigating. Now, this, this means that more people are using our Maples app but also this starts to showcase the power of our maps and our solutions, software, to the enterprise customers across automotive and corporate and government. And so the knock-on effect of increased B2C usage, uh, uh, you know, is, it will show up in the B2B and B2B2C uh, uh, business as well. That, that's, uh, that's what we hope. And, of course, our B2C gadgets are doing well. So with that, I'll kind of conclude my uh, opening remarks, and we can take take questions from, uh, from the audience. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question-answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shobit Singhal from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. So, congrats on a good set of numbers. So, I have uh, two questions. Uh, since the last two quarters, uh, our CNE is uh, showing good growth and its contribution has increased than AM segment now. So, how do you see this growth going forward in CNE segment? And also, how are solutions are used on ONDC ecosystem? So this is the first question. Yeah. Um, so for us, you know, it's our business growth. We look at it as a combination of A and M, C and E. Uh, the the specific contribution of one versus the other on is, the is on a quarter on quarter basis. It's not something we look at. We are our objective is to grow our business across the board. 
so in that sense, we are happy with both uh, both sides, our automotive and mobility tech and consumer tech and enterprise digital transformation. Specific to ONDC, actually there are a ton of use cases which can make ONDC-based commerce and commerce players much more competitive, uh, you know, from a cost efficiency point of view, as well as a custom, customer experience point of view, and that's why they should be using uh, Mapma India. Now, what is happening is, you know, the biggest pain point that these days people face is when they have to put in an address, a uh, residential address, and get goods delivered or food or goods delivered there. And when they type in, for example, a Google Maps API, which powers a bunch of consumers' uh, delivery apps, uh, then they are not able to put that house address. The delivery guy has to keep calling where to come, go to the back side, or it takes some extra time for that that person. With using MapIndia's APIs, that delivery address captures accurately and navigable to the front door uh, is what uh, we enable. And the second is when navigating, you know, these delivery uh, riders or delivery vehicles, the driver's riders are typically a lot of churn is happening there and they're new to the cities. They don't know the ways. So like I said in Maple's app, when these junction views, speed limits, speed breakers, tip cost, toll cost, all of that is there. People are able to navigate safely and more efficiently, cost effectively. And in the delivery segment or logistics segment, this has a strong impact on profitability of these companies as well as the customer experience. So that's where ONDC related folks who you know are coming with a fresh mindset of reimagining commerce are able to work with us without those legacy packages or legacy tech systems. And uh, we are also we believe this is a moment to create new commerce in the country based on better, more accurate maps than the legacy. Google system, and that's where we, uh, we are also having a lot of uh, initiative and joint collaboration with ONDC. So that's the exciting thing. Okay. Uh, so my second question is: so uh, on, uh, uh, July month, uh, automobile uh, sales growth has been very strong. So how do you see growth for A and M segment for the year? Yeah, I mean, we'll be we'll be in line with or above. Uh, in industry growth, so I mean that's um, it's a pretty steady, uh, steady business. As more and more also new platforms go live in the next year, uh, especially the large EV platforms, then we'll see some even more uh, uptake. So it's a steady state uh, right now, and we're on track for you know what we want to achieve over the full year. I don't want to go quarterly. Uh, I mean, I request everybody to look at Map India from a year to date, year on year point of view, and in that sense, we are on track for the year. Okay, so thank you. That's all for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sampad Nayak from Tiger Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for the good set of numbers. So I have basically two questions. One question is on growth trend. So uh, we are talking a good growth. So can you tell me where this growth is coming from, and uh, how how are we poised for FY24 and 25? Uh, the growth is coming from across our market segments and across our products. Okay, so this is automotive OEMs, uh, mobility fleets, logistics fleets, consumer tech companies, traditional corporates, uh, you know, uh, government. It's broad based. In every segment, we have we have a large order, open order book. As you know, at the beginning of the year, it was 918 crores. So as we deliver on that order book, our revenues uh, start happening. Plus, we've added a bunch of customers. In the last year, you know, the number went up to 850 plus from 600. So about 250 plus customers were added. So as those customers ramp up, um, you know, our mass as fast uh, uh, revenue. Uh, starts uh, uh, going up, and uh, what we've kind of said is, uh, you know, we did the analyst and investor day, and we put up the presentation back in June. Uh, there is a path that we see towards crossing the milestone of 1,000 plus crore revenue uh, in the next four five years, uh, and uh, you know, and for the this uh, coming year, we're anyways planning for a 40% uh, type of growth, 40% plus type of growth. So we'll. Uh, so we're on track right now, and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how that 
develops or you know builds up uh, by the end of the year great sir thank you so my second question is regarding drone business so in your previous con call you said you are venturing into drone business so can you tell me about what exactly like what kind of services you are into whether it be manufacturing or software or services and also the total accessible market of this segment yeah see in drones what we have positioned ourselves in the in the market is we are a full stack solutions provider we can supply drones to customers who need drones we can also provide services based on drones or solutions based on drones uh, meaning that we can fly the drones on behalf of our customers uh, acquire data uh, analyze that data and deliver them the relevant output and also we are a systems integrators with where, where drone is just one part of the solution so and so in that and of course you know we are uh, strong capital based strong uh, you know credentials as a company so in that sense we are better off than the than the many small players in the market uh, as well as uh, people who have are only pure play uh, drone providers uh, as well as uh, because we have a lot of our own products and platforms that customers need um and uh, of course the 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 market segments is going into is uh, mapping and survey you know the country is doing this big exercise around swamvitswa or other kinds of uh, you know survey and 3d mapping we are participating in that even for smart cities or you know uh, or uh, state level governance projects uh, but even on the private sector side you know whether it's manufacturing or energy uh companies which want uh, you know drone based mapping done and there'll be more use cases that will build up uh, as time comes as we expand our kind of product portfolio organically and in conjunction with our inorganic uh, investments that that we have been making this is a large addressable market i think people people have talked about it enough in the market and we believe that we can participate in it uh, nicely uh, and strongly in the time to come so just one follow up question so like how many like what is the revenue that we have clocked so far and where do we see ourselves in next 2 to 3 years in this segment uh, we have not broken out segment wise uh, uh, this drone segment it is something that uh, we've talked about as a third pillar for the company in the times to come at the right time we'll talk about it but right now we don't uh, separate it out as a segment sure sir thank you so much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amarnath Bhagat from Ministry of Finance of Oman. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, team. Uh, congratulations for a fantastic set of number and walking the talk as well. That what you are saying is delivering. That's very nice to see. Uh, I have two set of questions. First of all, this 30-35 percent growth for the next three four years as per your business plan. uh how it would be the mix of that growth means it would be mostly from the map side or mostly from your uh, iot side uh, the very purpose of asking this question is as you know uh, that that your margin for the map side is quite higher compared to uh, on the iot side so if the revenue growth comes more from the other side the second side it could have the impact on the overall margin and return on capital employed so can you please guide us little bit this growth which is coming how the ball park ratio between this map and iot services related and how the margin will look like we don't need a guidance but considering the margin at that moment 40 41% something like that will it be maintained something like that or it will also have an impact okay let me try let me attempt to uh, answer your question you have a very valid question there are few things people go by perception uh if you think about it how many companies even have a 50% margin on map business worldwide probably no one similarly if you're thinking that the iot led business will be since it's hardware driven so it might have a very low margin a drone business probably is still not fully understood in the marketplace so the similar perception may happen so why i said all this is how you create solutions to solve the problems in the marketplace what 
execution you do and what is that execution method you follow has been the secret sauce of MapMindia's success so far. And there is no reason why that secret sauce will not continue. So, in short, I can assure you, be it IoT, be it drone, or be it map, we look at all of them together as three pillars of the company. And then we try to see how the overall business growth happens Yeah, I got your point, sir. And um, I'm just trying to understand, overall, considering the business miss you were thinking, whether IoT, drone, or art, how the margin picture will look like, Mane, uh, because finally it's end up uh, into the margin picture. And as you just now said, uh, you are one of the probably one that who is getting that kind of a margin, 40 41%. And eventually, that kind of a margin will attract severe competition, uh, either nationally or internationally. And to protect that margin, uh, I don't know what kind of a moat we have that the others cannot do that, uh, and we can continue to have that margin. I'm just trying to gauge the things. At the moment, what you are doing something very unique. But going forward, considering your growth and the huge amounts of the margin and return on capital employed, surely the, it will attract the uh, uh, different kind of an, uh, competition. So I'm just trying to gauge the thing that we are only getting the uh, guidance about the revenue, but we're not getting the uh, sense how the things will go around considering the current situation, which is very flashy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you talked just about moat and related to that margin question. So I just say that, look, uh, it's not easy to build a map data product at the scale that we have been able to build, which is serving the entire country. And we're not stopping just here. So the business that we have built definitely has a very strong moat. It's not replicable by uh, just capital uh, that anybody else can potentially deploy. Uh, the amount of IP or intellectual capital that has gone in and the time investment. And then this ability to create so many use cases and so many products that we have created, which then usage of which further enhances the map. There are, I mean, there is nobody else that has this uh, ability. Of course, people will come in and try. They have in the past also, I mean, since MapFundia has been in business, which means since 95, there have been GIS companies, there have been people who have tried to build data products, I mean, and the big ones, not just the small ones, they have not been able to manage it. So, And what we are doing now is we are making significant further investments in further advancing the maps, what we are calling this 4D high-definition digital map twin. That's why these drones and IoT is playing an important role in getting us towards the next set of advanced map data products. And on the software side, we are covering various market segments, automotive and mobility, through NCase and logistics, SaaS, uh, including hardware, and on the consumer tech, a whole range of APIs, so that to enable any consumer tech company, and then a full-fledged digital transformation platform for enterprises. So in that sense, we are shoring up our moat and trying to expand it further, and that will keep us differentiated in the market. Look. Our objective is to grow our profits, okay? On the four and five year time horizon, we see a very large revenue that is coming up, a milestone that we will hit. We are focused on that. And what Mr. Verma said, our, our DNA of execution is to make sure that we are capital efficient. I do, whatever the other players may do or not do, if our products are strong, we continue to innovate and we execute uh, efficiently, I think we'll be in a good position. Our objective with the investor day was to give a sense of use cases and revenue growth. We definitely did not want to focus that conversation on what the margin is. You'll see that build up in the next year uh, or so, which will give you, uh, which might give you some analysis or confidence for the future. Okay. My second set of questions, sir, uh, would be your international part of the business. Uh, in your presentation, you said you already extended to 200 countries. Uh, I just want to know that growth from that international businesses, and is that business uh, secure 
a similar kind of a margin what you do in India? Uh, and how, how do you project yourself on that international mapping thing? And compared to, uh, you know, we have the, the, we have the Google in our plate always, you know. So India, maybe you have a government protection in terms of using of the map and the foreign companies can't really go to that detail which the Indian company does, but that is not true for the international market. So how do you... No, I'll just, you uh, I'll, I'll separately uh, try to... Uh, we, India provides no government <laughs> government uh, protection to Mathma India, okay? Ma Google has been in the market and done freely what they wanted to do since 2007-8, and in fact, they have been the one which have taken advantage in some way or the other through the monopoly and and uh, flouting whatever regulations there were. So, in, if anything, despite an unfair advantage, we have built up such a strong business in India. Okay, the situation going forward into the future may be uh, may be different, but uh, if history has a track record, then we are winning based on our competitiveness and our innovation and our market execution or nothing else. Now, when it comes to the interna international business, uh, we have said since the IPO time that this is a story that will develop in the next few years. Uh, and we are working hard towards that exactly. I don't have, uh, I don't have numbers to tell you right now, and it is, not, uh, it is not part of the revenue estimation that we've given for for this year, but I can tell you that there are increasingly customers who are starting to take us for our international maps. We are actively building international maps um, uh, for various geographies where we believe our customers are there. I mean, our existing customers are already there, and we are talking with them, expanding with them. That's an uh, that's a uh, efficient way of expansion. Uh, and again. For these international markets, given how we've been able to build a strong map data product in India using all sorts of technology, uh, we will bring that to bear for these other countries where actually there was some prior public mapping infrastructure already, but in fact, in many countries, uh, we are told that Google is not the preferred option or Google is not able to satisfy the market needs. India has taken a lead in the ways in which map, uh, mapping is being used. That combined with our software solutions, our IoT systems, our drone solutions, I think will position us well when we go stronger and stronger into those international markets. It's a story like consumer that you will see in the next uh, couple of years develop. Uh, So current, your revenue projection does not include anything from the international, so anything comes out of that will be an addition to what you already projected? I'm not trying to say that. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just giving you a sense that in this year, in this year, uh, we are not, uh, we have not, because somebody had asked me a question even a few quarters ago, that what will your international revenue be in FY24? I said, don't count on that. We are focused on executing. Um, I mean, so I don't want, I'm not giving any new revenue uh, kind of uh, uh, picture based from what we, what we uh, gave in the June, uh, June investor and analysis. I think just uh, please understand that we have given, uh, talked about in the analyst me, our roadmap to 1,000 crores. Uh, every revenue from which country and which place, definitely we have not talked. And this year, definitely, we are saying that our growth is designed and supposed to happen from the India story only. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your patient time, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants to please limit your question to two per participants only. You may rejoin the question queue if you have a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Anmol Garg from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi guys. Uh, congratulations and good set of numbers and thanks for the opportunity. So I have a couple of questions. <laughs> Firstly, um, we have seen a strong growth uh, in the IT business this time, both sequentially on a buy and buy basis. So just wanted to correlate that with the cost of material, which uh, actually has seen a bit of a dip uh, uh, if you look at it on a sequential basis. 
So would that mean that a large part of the IoT business would have come from uh, renting the devices rather than sale of the devices or anything like that? Or how should we correlate on the same? Uh, and we'll look at our business on a year-on-year basis, please. We don't do this quarter-on-quarter. Year-on-year, quarter. Uh, year, cost of material has gone up, okay? But, of course, we have also seen our IoT business margins co- uh, continue to expand. So, uh, we, we won't, uh, I mean, just, yeah, that's um, Okay, okay, sure. Uh, and secondly, just wanted to uh, understand the B2C part of the business as well. Uh, currently, uh, as you guys have said that you uh, are not generating any revenue uh, over there, but that app is g- gaining a lot of traction. So any plans to monetize uh, the app in any way uh, in, in near to medium term to long term as well? Yeah, for now we want everybody to start downloading and uh, I mean the Maples app. What we are liking is, you know, people are loving the app. They are telling each other to download it because it helps them. Uh, obviously, you know, there is a there is a knock-on effect on B2B and B2B2C. As I said, uh, you know, the more people who use Maples app, the more it helps our, our business in general. That's what uh, is there. And of course, you know, over time, uh, there, there are n number of ways of monetizing a consumer business, but again, it's not something we want to talk about right now. Our focus is if you all can also, I mean, say, I'm saying this tongue-in-cheek, if you all can also get more people to download the Maples app and help you and help us. Uh, sure, uh, sure, Ron. Uh, and lastly, one uh, one thing to mind, uh, is it possible to give a breakup uh, of the IoT business between auto and theme? So basically what I wanted to understand is the growth uh, in the auto business, particularly in the map business uh, out there. And uh, also the realizations, uh, if you can talk about, given that uh, you have been talking about that uh, more and more EVs are coming coming up uh, in the auto business. Uh, what was the last part you asked? Realization, EV? I uh, just missed the uh, second. So, so what, what I wanted to also understand is on the realization or the pricing part uh, in the auto map business, uh, given that more and more EVs uh, are coming up uh, in, in that business as your customer. The yeah, IoT business goes into both a and and CNE as well, okay? And the automotive business, uh, you know, is definitely growing faster than the industry kind of volume growth. So, I mean, there's more uptake of our solutions. Uh, you know, uh, overall, if I look at automotive, uh, four-wheeler, two-wheeler, CV, etc. I mean, across the uh, four-wheeler and two-wheeler, we are growing well. EVs, uh, if you know, all the new EV launches, most at least, if not all, most of them uh, are going built in with our solutions. You saw the XUV400, uh, which went live. The MG bunch of EVs which have gone live, and there are large EV uh, programs that are going to go, uh, you know, live uh, in the next years. And two years, if you look at the automotive OEM uh, roadmap, they also are talking about it. So obviously, that's going to be a great kind of outcome uh, for us, or good outcome. I shouldn't, uh, I mean, it's because EVs have more use cases for Mapper India, like range, uh, adjusting your range anxiety, or uh, giving battery efficient routes. Uh, and uh, along with EV, even ADAS uh, is, is happening where, you know, maps are playing a important role. So I would say that we are happy with our automotive business. Uh, you know, it it uh, it gives us a lot of confidence in the long term as well because the connected vehicle journey really started in the last, uh, you know, two years. Our IPO year 2021 is when the first green shoots of connected vehicles started to come from the OEMs. And once connected vehicles have started to come with their next generations of platforms, the use cases for us uh, have expanded. So this is definitely uh, a medium and long-term story, uh, and that's why we are happy about it. Uh, and we are seeing more and more EV connected and ADAS vehicles, and even mobility as a service starting to kick in, which will have good uh, medium and long-term uh, impact on automotive. Um, okay, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, that's it for mine. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Modwani from Newama. Please go ahead. 
Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is around that, uh, can you give us some sense on the number of IoT devices sold for the quarter? Uh, so good to see that you know, the IoT margin has expanded quarter on quarter, uh, but just wanted to understand then how many devices were sold. I see, we, we, we talk about the IoT device uh, volume uh, on a yearly basis. I can just say that we're on track. It's going well. It's, uh, it's going well. But uh, specific numbers we'll share at end of the year. Uh, so is it like fair to understand that, you know, as your SaaS income has started, you know, kicking in with the 1.9 lakh devices sold in last year, FI23, uh, these margins should continue to see uh, an improvement going forward? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it, on a on a year, look at our business year on year is what I'll always say. It will give you, I mean, it will give you more reliable uh, analysis. And uh, uh, in that sense, yes, I mean, what you have seen first nine months, I think, of IoT business, it was roughly something like zero. Uh, but then Q4, it went to four. It's 6.3 right now. Uh, I may have got that nine months number wrong, but it's gone from 4% to 6.3%. So we will continue to see a gradual increase. And, on a, and that's our endeavor, uh, to have the operating leverage uh, and the SaaS income kicking in uh, have a good uh, impact on IoT business. Of course, you know, you have to uh, tally that against growth also that we want to drive because it's a pretty large market. So we have some internal kind of, you know, uh, calibration on where we want uh, to see that. Uh, sure, that's helpful. And one other question is on, you know, can you give us some, uh, you know, color on the geospatial analytics solutions that went live during the quarter? Not naming any customer per se, but just uh, any of the solutions that could have, uh, you know, gone live during the quarter. Yeah, see, when it comes to this geospatial analytics, customers, for example, are on a retail expansion uh, spree, or, you know, they're looking at their retail network and distribution. Uh, and for that, what Mapendia does is tell them by whether rural or urban, by area, in fact, down to a you know square kilometer or half a square kilometer grid in urban, as, and then rural down to village level, and then on across highways or roads, you know, at a very granular level, we can give them geo demographics, which that as well as our analytics platform that allows them to. Uh, kind of correlate their first party data, their own sales data, or competitor information, or data that we give about the market, and come up with the analysis where to set up uh, retail outlets is just one of the examples. There's in fact many more use cases that they have for us, and we try to elucidate that in our investor and analyst day as well. So, uh, uh, you know, whether it's banks, or it's, uh, you know, energy retail companies, or it's, uh, you know, QSR companies, or it is footwear companies. Many of them are also publicly listed themselves. Or it is uh, fintech uh, companies, uh, you know, they're all using our geospatial analytics for, you know, one example is, you know, negative area for uh, credit risk assessment. Or, or credit risk assessment or go-no-go decisions on, on loans based on, you know, the area profiling from where a person is, uh, you know, applying for a loan. Uh, so hopefully that gives you some color on geospatial analytics. Sure. So these solutions would be falling mostly in the consumer enterprise tech space, right? And that segment, right? Yeah. I mean, automotive customers also do geospatial analytics and mobility customers also do geospatial analytics. I mean, they are also enterprises in that, right? But but you are right broadly. Sure. That's all helpful. Thank you so much for answering my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my uh, no, the question is on the IoT-led uh, business. So here we are seeing such strong growth. So as the earlier participant asked about, it's a low margin business. But uh, if I see it, another major component of the revenue is sale of hardware. So if you can uh, clarify, is, is, is the sale of hardware just a pass-through? 
and if i see the services revenue the the ebitda margins on if i take the net revenue the ebitda margins is around 18 to 19% on this on the on the services part of iot so how do you see that moving uh i mean it's not passed through and the impact of uh, saas income takes time as we've talked uh, before so uh, you know it, it's a complex calculation not easily explained and probably not easily analyzable because there's so many different hardware which have different kind of saas components etc so but in general what happens is the hardware is not it's not uh, passed through the hardware will generate in future uh, saas income as the uh, you know as they continue to subscribe to the service and so that's why you're seeing a gradual increase in the uh, you know in the in the in the margins um and uh, you know but again like i said it depends also uh, you know how aggressively we push the uh, the hardware into the market so as the saas component increases so you know the sale of hardware also includes some saas so as the scale up uh, so just want to try to understand is that when we gain scale can this margin uh, expand or is it you uh, know uh, is it going to be at the same level because generally saas saas is a very high margin the uh, couple of ways the uh, the solutions are given to the customer the one may be given as hardware with built in saas so that is known where the entire margin is a combination of the two the other one solution could be where hardware is given earlier and the saas model kicks off later so that's what rohan was trying to explain that it becomes a, a, a little complex first is who the customer is coming why we are doing it so all these things if you are trying to understand the iot that's why we are trying to help you with understanding our iot led business where it went up from 4% margin to 6% margin and we see a nice growth in happening over the quarters or the years to come so certain and then you know one more thing overall try to understand the three pillars work in tandem the drone the iot and the map they work in tandem so is there are companies who are just in iot business there are companies who are just in drone business there are companies who are just in map business and one of the things probably to understand our uniqueness is at least i'm not aware but uh, probably there is hardly anyone who has tried to combine the power of these three pillars together to create a business where the use cases are becoming enormous and so uh, in terms of the you know opportunity uh, know that you have uh, you know like shown in analyst day also so in terms of so the major part of the opportunity is from the government and the modem and and the like mobility you know segment so in our revenue you know as of as of now how much revenue would be getting from government and mobility uh less than uh less than not 10 Less, yeah, around or less than ten percent. In that, it's in the approximate so uh, odd. Uh, um, that's government and mobility. Uh, it's in, yeah, I mean, we talked about IoT. Yeah, so it's. Uh, it, I mean, these are uh, relatively small contributors to the overall business. Okay. so the you know the government and mobility business will you know it could be included in the platform on iot side it depends uh, you can't uh, these are those are products uh, map and data and platform and iot are product cuts on our business anm and cne are uh, market cuts on our business so you can't say that one one pro- one uh, market segment goes on uh, or focuses only on one product it's for every customer of ours we have multiple use cases based on multiple products okay okay so thank you thank you the next question is from the line of satendra chakraborty from chakraborty family office please go ahead hello good morning 
Um, let me start first uh, with something in the, uh, in the P&L statement. So in the consolidated P&L statement, I see technical services outsourcing. That line is shooting through the roof almost so that it is more than last year's full year's results. Can you give us a bit more flavor on what that is and how should we look at it in the future? Okay, uh, good point. Uh, if you look at the consolidated, if, I hope you. I think you are looking at the consolidated financials, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. Both in standalone and consolidated, I see the numbers are, are really forex. Uh, yeah. What I For, see one here. is what is this technical services outsourced in the consolidated? It is outsourced to our subsidiary when it comes to the IoT part is concerned for any of the items. That's one. The second is uh, also when we try to uh, use the services from outside temporary workers or otherwise in order to collect data and uh, items like that. Third is, uh, Anuj? These are the two? G two P and uh, so so now if these are going up, that means uh, two things are happening. Uh, one is we are building and spending more money on the as part of the in, uh, internal uh, internal creation of the maps and all that. And the second is definitely for. Certain re deliveries, revenues, uh, if our subsidiary is doing the work, then naturally they will bill the parent, at, but in the consolidated now, it becomes the total amount. Yeah, I will, I will just add to what Mr. Omar is saying. As our map business or map product, uh, you know, uh, creation increases, and even our IoT business increases, uh, this is one of the costs that is, that is going up. I mean, compare that to the fixed cost which is pretty stable, uh, the employee benefits. Uh, if you compare that and see the employee benefit uh, hasn't gone up in that way. Mm, okay, makes sense. Uh, my second question is uh, on the c &E segment. Um, so I, I think you have made a lot of points uh, in the presentation. They are all very well taken. I was initially thinking of asking you how the market is evolving, but there are so many companies, I, I guess it is a very... Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm not able to hear the question. Um... Uh, we take the next question from the line of Godwin Fernandez. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. So in a, uh, in a recent interview, uh, we came across a statement uh, regarding uh, the work that he, we have been working for the defense industry. Normally, these defense companies uh, tend to tie up with an R&D with DRDO and do develop some products. Are we into any of such projects? Okay, and what are our prospects in defense industry? Thank you. Uh, you know, our engagement with defense is going well. We have one business from the defense. We are uh, in the middle of executing on that. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that we believe will, will expand further in the, in the coming time because our products are quite well suited, you know, not just from a technical, I mean, definitely from a technical point of view, but also from the Atmanirvata, Make in India, IDDM point of view. So uh, uh, it's something that we see as an important area where we'll do the strategic uh, uh, things and we'll do the ones that are relevant to us and in, you know, aligned, aligned to what our business objectives are. Okay. And uh, my second question is, uh, into this consumer and uh, enterprising angle, we have been, we are having clients like HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance into our portfolio. And recently, a report from Morgan Stanley states that India will be per capita will be jumping around towards $4,500 within a span of around six to seven years. So the industry or the space that we are into is having huge, huge growth opportunities. 
uh, considering the kind of clients we cater to. And so how do you assess because still, I don't know what our clients we are, are in pipeline. Uh, since we have these big shots who take extra care in getting this mapping data and using it, how do we see the other players coming into our mapping solutions? Thank you. BFSI and FinTech is an important vertical. We have blue chip customers there and we're adding customers. Uh, you know, there are many, many players in BFSI and FinTech customer segment for us. And we have blue chip customers and we're adding more and more. And we're expanding our use cases and usage with our existing customers. So it's an interesting uh, space to be in. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we're happy with, it's like automotive uh, for us. We're doing we're doing well there. I, I don't know about other companies like us and what they can do and can't do, but ours, uh, our, our part of maps, APIs, this digital transformation platforms in future where relevant uh, IoT, etc., or drone-based data acquisition. I mean, there's a there's a roadmap towards growth in BFS and fintech for us. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's that's it from my end. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants to please limit your question to two per participants only. The next question is from the line of Bharat Seth from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you very much and uh, excellent result. Sir, I want to get some sense uh, that the pipeline which we have given, say 25,000 crore, so can you give some kind of a break? I mean, uh, directional how much is say from our mapping business b2c b2b and this mapping iot and international domestic and when do we really start seeing those converting and uh, going ahead uh, we had done this analyst and investor day in june exactly to kind of explain that we put the presentation up on the uh, stock exchange, it's quite detailed. I'll suggest you read through it. You'll get more uh, details from that. Okay. So, and when we are talking of so 40% uh, Kegar uh, top line growth, so how confident are we on this kind of a growth? We are working towards that. Okay. And there was always uh, some kind of a seasonality earlier. So, how do we see now with this kind of a business? Uh, this seasonality will again kick in or I mean? Our seasonality, if you want to really uh, observe, then look at it on a year-on-year -year basis. Seasonality, not quarter and quarter, I think and from the very... Quarterly will, will still remain there, you mean? We, uh, from the very first uh, earnings call a uh, year and a half back, we have been requesting all the investors not to just go by one quarter. If we are... For this year, if you are talking about a 40% growth, mm -hmm. look at the whole year. If you see this quarter also, we have achieved a 37.5 or 38% growth. Okay. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. <laughs> the next question is from the line of Sarang Sanil from RW Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and contact on greater number. So I have a couple of questions on the author side. Uh, so first question is, how are the contracts drawn, uh, drawn with the uh, auto OEMs? Right? I understand the service is provided for three to five years. Are we getting the revenue upfront from these OEMs when a vehicle is sold? I want you to know this. Uh, if there is an annuity part that we are getting from these vehicles, or are we getting incremental revenue from these vehicles only by upselling additional API. That's my first question. Yeah, the auto business basically, they come up with <coughs> new platforms every couple of years uh, and uh, which have a bunch of car models or two-wheeler models on which they figure out what all solutions to put in. Uh, and that's where we bank those contracts and uh, then as those vehicles go into the market, each vehicle goes built in with our uh, solutions. Uh, we, have to, we have to provide them the solution from the very beginning. Uh, and also there are some components which have a annuity component uh, uh, additionally. So revenue is both at the time of sale of the vehicle and potentially and increasingly also 
uh, there are some additional uh, uh, monies that we get uh, per year, uh, depending on what use case, etc. And yes, beyond that, there are more use cases that, uh, you know, across our end case suite that we call uh, navigation led, connected, ADA shared, and electric solutions, there's more use cases that we are upselling to the OEMs. So I believe Mr. Sanil, of... oh, sorry to interrupt. May I please request you to rejoin the queue for your follow up as we have many questions in turn. Ma'am, one more question. I'll just ask my second question. Okay, sure. Right. Uh, so uh, so regarding uh cars with ADA feature, how are the revenue intro structured? Because ADA being a very critical feature in a car, say once you're done providing service for the contracted period. Post that, who's going to pay us? Is it the end customer or the OEM, considering you know how critical it is? Couldn't hear the question clearly. I mean, uh, but I mean, general OEM is our customer. Consumer is customer separate uh, business. So ADA uh, vehicles with ADA feature, right? So once the services are uh, being provided. Post the contract period, who is going to pay us? Is it the OEM or the end yeah. customer? The OEM pays us. So, so if if our customer holds the vehicle for say 15, 20 years, OEM keep paying us. Uh, I mean, I I I I don't I don't know. Uh, you know, the, let me help you, Rohan. These are complex contractual issues. Uh, how can OEM pay us for 20 years uh, of the vehicle ownership or not? Uh, is something we, uh, our customer is OEM and they pay us. That's all uh, is uh, uh, that's all is part of the contract. How con how the OEM deals with the custo their customer for 20 years is something between them and the the end buyer. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants to please limit your question to one per participant only. The next question is from the line of Sampat Nayak from Tiger Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. This is a follow-up question. So I understand that own business is relatively small. So I think like five to six years, um, it can be huge, right? So I just want to understand. So like in drone manufacturing, we said we, we are into drone manufacturing. So is it like, do we have anything proprietary in these lines or is it just assemble, we gather part and assemble? Secondly, on the uh, like drone services part, so like uh, you said you are into drone services also. So uh, when you do that, don't you deviate from your core business? No, the the second uh, second question. Let me answer first. Drone solutions. Everybody knows the use case is mapping and providing map based solution. Drone is used to capture data from the sky versus the ground. So who better than a mapping company actually to provide the drone based solution where data is captured from the drone, but then again processed, analyzed, and delivered to our mapping and geospatial. Uh, GIS platforms, etc. So it's not deviating from our goal. It is uh, actually enhancing. There's a network uh, uh, flywheel effect also in the business because we are in the business of acquiring data, productizing it, and disseminating it through various use cases. And on the fourth, we are not ourselves manufacturing drones uh, right now. Uh, you know, that's why we have these inorganic investments uh, and partnerships where we can leverage the capabilities of companies so that we can provide the full solution uh, 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 of that. And yeah, these are proprietary products manufactured by you know, uh, company partners. Just, I think on the similar front, you know, in the IoT also there's a hardware, and we make uh, invest uh, some of the inorganic investments we have made is keeping in mind that we get reliable capability and, and sources for whether it is a drone or IoT. Okay, uh, just follow-up question, sir. So this, this question is, uh, in terms of, you said you are into drone services, uh, which means I think you provide pilots and drones, right, on a need, need basis. 
uh, am i correct no no that drone services is a broad uh, we are not a pilot rental company when i mean drone services or drone solutions i mean that if a customer needs an area mapped or an area inspected and they want to get for example a 3d volumetric analysis of that or they want to understand how that uh, area has changed some kind of change detection or they want to extract some data from that for example the swamitra project where they want to extract property rights or land records from that so they want to see the extent of the property that's the mapping use case uh, and that's where we are positioned very strongly as part of that if we have to fly the drone and we have to capture the data uh, and process that we'll do that as well okay sir got it sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint we take the last question for for today it's from the line of devan divyansh gupta from latin advisors please go ahead sir gupta you may please go ahead with your question hey sorry i'm audible yes sir you are you may please proceed yeah i have a couple of questions one is that what is our uh, map updation for the quarter and how do we see it on a yearly basis and this thing that my understanding with regards to the iot devices that we sell to our customer is that the uh, mapping the sas solution is available uh, for one year now given that gtop has been there with us for more than a year what has been the renewal uh, percentage of customers who have been using the devices for more than a year yeah uh, on the first question i mean this map um, updation is a continuous ex exercise on a mm -hmm. monthly basis we update and release a, a master map data for the entire country but on a real time uh, basis we also keep updating updating and publishing the latest maps which is why you see when you know the new airport is in all dated in port blair the same day or very next day a 3d map of that airport is available on uh, on maps or if in a new road or tunnel uh, is uh, you know opened up for public usage it was already mapped as under construction in our map and then is opened up for navigation so there's like a real time rich kind of pipeline where we are continuously uh, kind of publishing uh, real time map updates and then there's a monthly uh, cadence to uh, to uh, releasing the master and uh, uh, that's where expansion is happening and on iot uh, you know uh, this uh, the sas income that you are seeing is a result of uh, of uh, you know uh, past customers who bought the hardware uh, we've not released the stat on renewal i'll take it on board as something to see uh what to do for for future i mean it's just we've started to explain the iot business just in the last couple of quarters on a quarterly basis so hopefully you are getting some insight into that already thank you very much ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments thank you and over to you all just want to say thank you to everybody i really appreciate your time and uh, yep. thank you thank you very much on behalf of anand rati shares and stock brokers that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your lines